Hey everyone, my name is Nat. Welcome to my shop. Today is February 23rd and this is my weekly shop update. So usually I do announcements and stuff in the beginning, but I thought I'd push things up this week and get right into what's going on here in the shop. So if we come over here, we can see I have been working on the gooseneck moldings for the upper case. And I haven't attached them yet at all, but I did attach one of the returns here on the the right side of the case. <laughs> so let's just attach like this right onto the the gooseneck and now return the gooseneck molding profile uh, towards the back here. So obviously I haven't mounted them to the case yet, but I thought I'd show or talk a little bit about uh, wood movement here and how I would attach something like this to this big wide board here. So if I were to glue this whole molding directly to the case, I would have a pretty big uh, cross grain situation going on here and that probably wouldn't work out so well as to eventually crack and break either the scroll board would crack or the molding would crack. So what I've done here is I'm going to be um, gluing just right through here, um, just a little bit right here, maybe just up a little bit here, just to get me a few inches of glue over here. And then up here I drilled a hole for a screw and I elongated that hole so that the molding can move up and down as, or the, um, the scroll board can move up and down behind the molding as the panel here expands and contracts. And that'll keep everything from falling apart in the future someday. <laughs> so the most interesting thing about these moldings, let me grab the other one. The interesting thing about these moldings is cutting these miters on here. And that might look kind of tricky because how do you cut that miter? Because this is all curvy and there's no good reference spots for this. Um, if you're good with a handsaw, you can just draw a line and cut to it. But I am not good. At least I don't know if I am. And I don't really have a nice crosscut saw for doing that. So I use my miter saw. And that was really easy to do using just this little, I don't know if you call it a jig. <laughs> it's just a piece of plywood that I, I cut here to relieve some material for the saw head to come in. And then over here, I have my saw angled at the 45 degree angle and I made a cut on the edge of the template or the jig or whatever. And that allows me to see exactly where the saw blade is going to cut. Um, and then I can use some double stick tape to actually stick the molding to this little jig, aligning the, the cut here, you can see that. I align the, the cut from my miter saw to the cut line. I think you can probably see a little bit of the pencil line on there still. There's a pencil line on here that I traced directly from the case and I was able to just rest the molding right onto the jig Put, that, um, put this little edge right here, right on that pencil line, and then just stick it down with that tape. And then I can take this whole thing to the saw and make my cuts. I can do the same thing on the other side as well. So that's how I was able to get the miters cut on these things. And that was honestly, I mean, it was a little scary or a little <laughs> intimidating, I guess, because I had so much time invested in making this molding already. Um, I probably had about six or seven hours into the goosenecks at that point before I cut them, but it went really well and it was probably the, like, the easiest thing as far as process goes of this whole thing. And that was, it was nice to get it to this shape or to this final thing because I can really see what it's going to look like when it's on the case, which is what you can see over here. Now the other thing I did here on the upper case is I worked on the, um, the internals here of where the bonnet top is going to go. And I want to show you what's going on in here because there's a lot of things going on inside this upper area here and you wouldn't really notice. It's a lot of hidden stuff that you, wouldn't, you won't see when the piece is finished. So I thought I'd just show you the inside of here and just take you through uh, what's all happening in here and what's going to happen to close it all up. All right, so this is the structure here of the, this is the back side, and this is the, the support here. This is gonna match the scroll board along the front. And eventually this is gonna get a bonnet top, which is just a, uh, basically a little roof. It's gonna get a little roof that goes along here. And there's a couple of different ways to make a bonnet top. Um, the way that's mentioned in the book that I'm going off of is to use a thin piece of plywood and just kind of bend it to the shape and attach it like that. Uh, you can also do a veneer attached to some canvas 
And you could also do a coopered top, which would just be a bunch of um, strips laid on here and kind of follow that curve. Now what I'm going to probably do is the veneer on canvas approach. Um, I like that better in this case because, well, it's a lot faster than doing a coopered top for sure. Um, but it allows me to use a piece of cherry that matches the whole rest of the piece as well so that I have a nice um, continuous color to the whole thing. If I went out and bought a piece of plywood, um, I don't even know if I can get thin enough cherry plywood for this or how much that would even cost. So I'm just going to kind of make my own with that piece of veneer and canvas and we'll see how that goes. I am also mentioned that when I go to attach the moldings, they are going to be attached a little bit higher than the scroll board and I'll give me a, they'll do two things for me. When I go to attach my, my bonnet top, the moldings will hide the edge of that bonnet top and also give me a little bit of a, a leeway here so when this scroll board uh, expands in the summertime you won't end up seeing this little bit of the top here protruding past the, um, the molding. So there's a few other things going on here as well. I added some blocking to the back here just to thicken these up. On this center piece here, this is where the, a finial is going to go. So there'll be a finial with an urn here that comes up through the center of the case. And then the thicker parts over here were for the, the returns on the molding. So that looks something like that. Just to thicken things up. You can also see that my carvings are attached in here. And then these side pieces here are notched around the carvings. And I went ahead and I did some dovetails up here um, just to practice. Uh, that, this is totally unnecessary up here, but I wanted to practice um, just a couple of different things. On this side, I tried basically cutting dovetails as fast as I could and I cut as close to the line as possible. And you can see they're not that great. I mean, they're not bad either, but there's a lot of gaps and things like that. So that, this is a good place to practice stuff like that on. Over here, I tried to do some really, really skinny pins. You can see this one is just the width of my handsaw plate at the tip here, so that is really, really tiny. That was really challenging to cut because it's just so small. But places like this, things that aren't going to be seen ever, those are great places to try different kinds of joinery or different takes on different kinds of joinery. Like here, trying to cut something as fast as possible with minimal cleanup and also a really, really small pin. Now there were a few different things that I needed to consider when I was attaching this back piece, this little bit of an L piece here, with regards to wood movement. Now the top here, or the scroll board, is going to move this way, and the top piece of the case is going to move this way. So I need to keep that in, in mind when I want to attach this. So the orientation I have here with the grain on the, um, the return piece and then the back scroll board, I have the grain running like this. So this is going to get taller and it's going to expand and contract in conjunction with the scroll board. However, it's not going to be expanding and contracting in conjunction with the top shelf. The top shelf is going to go like this and this is not going to move. So I did a few things for that. I have a fixed attachment point along the front here with some glue blocks and that will keep this whole thing fixed to the, the front here. But I left the bottom floating so it is not attached anywhere over here. It's not attached over here along the back. I have one screw in the side here and that's an elongated hole so they can go like that and we'll go back and forth so this whole thing can move. So that's just something to consider when you're building something out of solid wood. You really always need to be concerned with uh, wood movement. So a couple of announcements this week. This Wednesday, February 25th at 7 p.m. Central Time here, I'll be doing a live questions and answers session. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of talking in the beginning about a little more about lumber or drying your own lumber just based off some questions and feedback that I received based off of my drying your own lumber video. And then I'll open up the floor to questions about anything or if you want to talk more about drawing your own lumber, we can talk about that. That live session is going to be also hosted by my friend Nick Ferry. Um, that's just going to be really nice to have someone else on the, on, the, uh, on the show that I can have some dialogue with and have him kind of monitor the questions and feed me the questions and keep things moving. So that's going to help out a lot. I learned that last time, the first time I did a questions and answers session. It's really hard to be on the camera answering the questions and paying attention to the questions that are being asked. So that's going to help out a lot. Thank you Nick for agreeing to do that with me. If you're not familiar with Nick Ferry's channel, I'll leave a link to his channel down in the description. 
He's a great guy. You should check out his stuff. A lot of fun. The other announcement this week is the Matt and Matthew show. Episode number two is out. It was about uh, grain, actually grain selection, uh, grain orientation, and a little bit of wood movement was the main topics this week. Uh, I'll leave a link to that in the description down below. You can check that out. That was a really great episode. It was a lot of fun to shoot that one. Um, after doing that first one, we kind of figured out a lot of things that weren't working, so we had a chance to kind of tweak things a little bit. So the second episode is, is just that much better <laughs> as far as flow and, and quality and stuff. Now one thing we haven't mentioned and we haven't talked about on the actual show is why it's a video type show and not like just an audio podcast. Now I am planning on releasing it as an audio only thing at some point. It's on my to-do list. But the main reason why we want to do a video type show is that video really gives a lot more, um, I don't know, depth or a lot more substance to the answers and the things we can show. For instance, we don't have to spend a lot of time describing what we're looking at because you can see exactly what we're looking at and what we're trying to convey. So for instance, in this episode that we just did, we talked a lot about grain direction and um, grain orientation and grain flow. And that's really easy to show on camera what to look for and how that actually works instead of having to describe that to someone in an audio form. So the main focus there is really to be able to show exactly what we're talking about and just provide a lot better answers, a lot better content on that medium. So if you haven't seen that first episode, take a look at that one as well as the second episode that we just released. Links to those, as I said in the description, along with everything else I talked about today. Well, that I talked about linking to today. <laughs> so that's about it for me this week. Thank you as always for watching and greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments about anything I talked about today or anything here in my shop, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I appreciate those and I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Until next time, happy woodworking.